And welcome back, everybody, once again to the PCS Summer Split. Three games down, two more to go, and this one is sure to be an absolute banger. J-Team versus Mega Bank Beyond Gaming. But before we get there, I do want to... Once again, thank our wonderful sponsor on the split, CTBC Bank. They've been by our side for quite some time and continue to do so. Now, Clement, I know we were talking a little bit in the break about there's a lot of fuzzy math now with the way teams have been beating each other. Unexpected results. It, it seems like you've been crunching the numbers. What have you come up with? Today, the circle is finally complete. Bear with me. Sem9 has defeated Dewish Team, and Dewish Team just took down DCG. Okay. And DCG are in the right, cycle of the J-Team universe. And also, DCG okay. beat Beyond Gaming, which beat PSG. Gotcha. So you know what that means? Wait a minute. Do we, have we completed? We have completed. Have we completed the Circle of Suck, Clement? We have completed the Circle of Suck. Everyone is at the same level now. It's been so long. My since word. The PCS actually has came to this level, but we're here. I cannot believe it. I never thought I'd see the day. The parody has been achieved, but into this game, we will see everything has been in question. I don't know what to think anymore, but I do know what this lineup is. It is Rock, Konge, Yudi Boy, Lil V, and Enzo. And yeah, Rock is staying with the team. Previously, he had only been playing with J-Team for some of their, I want to say weaker opponents, but maybe J-Team saw the writing on the wall, realized everybody's the same. Everybody's just as competitive. Anyone can beat anyone in the PCS. It's a new day. We have J Team, you know, coming in a very strong uh, first round robin so far, but they did drop off to uh, CFO late uh, in yesterday's game. And I think a big thing is nobody wants to see Uniboy play Lissandra. It's just not his champion. No, no, uh, no, 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 no. He has been playing a lot more hyper carries, and we want to see him deal damage. On the other hand, the top lane is also different for Beyond Gaming. We have Rial finally stepping back into the roster. And I do believe this means we will be seeing more of a trend towards hyper carry Waco and playing more of a front to back style. I would like to see that. And I know Beyond have had a pretty good split uh, with Lee Kai overall, but I, I really like this team when it is a bit more on the team fighting side of things. Uh, speaking of Lissandra and not wanting it, I, I don't really want to see Minji on that champion either. I think he does better uh, with you know some, some of these other roaming style of champions as well mm -hmm. as the assassins has expanded his champion pool a little bit for the meta. But beyond gaming, I know their drafts sometimes confuse the heck out of you, Clem. It certainly confused the heck out of me. But they somehow find these wins when the win conditions are very narrow. And it is curious to, to really see what beyond gaming's level truly is. Uh, yeah, I have to say beyond gaming's drafts have been kind of all over the place. Uh, the first thing to note is there are the team in the PCS most likely to pick up the Lucian and Nami combo. They played it four times already, which is about half of their games, to be honest. Um, which And it does lock them in towards a more early game lane dominant uh, focus. But then you look at the top side, Lee Kai and Minji have just not been particularly good in lane. So it's, it's, it's a very... It's a very bizarre sort of mix of things that they have to do. And a lot of times they just survive based on Usha's heroics. Yeah, I, I, I am, I'm not sure what's, what's gonna happen here with Leong. Maybe the calculus changes a little bit, but we are taking a look at our bottom laners to compare them. Lil V statistically has been our best and most consistent performer in mm -hmm. that bottom lane in a stacked pool. And uh, part of the reason it's stacked is because of Wako. Wako's a great player as he stepped in to fill the shoes of Doggo this year. Sago going off over to the LPL and now down to the LDL, but that's another story. Wako has definitely stepped up, but his numbers aren't quite as good in most regards to Lil V. He does put out more damage and a greater share of his teams, and I think that does speak to his hyper carry tendency. Lil V, he'll kind of play around a little more, right? You see the Senna, you see the Callista. Yeah, he has the Aphelios too, but I do think these are two bot laners that have very different pools. For sure. I, I feel like Little V has more of a second track going into it. Uh, this season, his synergy with Enzo has been tremendous to watch. I think Enzo plays a great Renata. He's always been good with the Nautilus. So the Kalista is a very safe pickup for Little V. They can s stretch into multiple champions with it. And uh, the Aphelios is still a go-to. He still likes to play that hyper carry style. But on the other hand, I feel like Beyond Gaming has been a little bit more focused on the Lucian than the Jinx. I, I really want to see them try to opt into the Jinx a little bit more. I, I feel because 
um, with the laning strength of their other solo laners, it's probably better to go for a late game strategy rather than tie yourself in to the early game with Lucian. I think you're right about that one. We are seeing a lot of bot lane focus by the J team side, banning out both the Seraphine and the Senna. Jinx is still available. I don't know if that's necessarily ban worthy. Hoppy taking off the board against Konge. I think he was the first to pull this out, actually, in the PCS. Yeah, he's always been a long-time Poppy player. I feel like for J-Team, this draft is just about first pick Kalista. Um, if first pick Kalista isn't there, then you kind of just take the Athelios. I don't think they mind really playing into the, the Lucian and the Navi combo. So, yeah, they're not going to ban any of it, leave it open. And for Beyond Gaming, they have to think about the Kalista because... They haven't been picking it themselves, and I feel like it's such a danger to let Little V and Enzo walk into that one. And now yeah, J-Team, very happy to just snag it up. There we go. Young Gaming, they banned Lucian themselves. Might have been a bit of a misread, but let's see what they opt for in the bottom side. You know, the, the Jinx uh, could be a big one. I wonder if Kino would be the type to maybe try and take away something like the Renata that's been played so much by Enzo. Uh, it, it's a great combination. I mean, if Felios coming in here could be a big play. This would be Wako's first on the split. Mm, it does fit that late game consistent damage threat. Not so, not as much of a hyper carry and it's like big pop-off potential, but it's consistent damage nonetheless. And we have a really strong jungler coming in from Husha. I would also say Husha uh, has probably been the best performing member on Beyond Gaming. His engages, absolutely on mm -hmm. point. Great stuff we saw in the Lee Sin. So I'm very confident with him on the uh, Wukong just going into this one. And I do expect the last pick to go towards Minji while uh, Liao just picks up something like Sejuani or Renar. Makes sense. Now with the Renata allowed through, it does get paired with Kalista here for Lil V and Enzo, so they get a uh, nicely preferred combination. Kongi picks up the Diego, and Beyond Gaming are going to opt uh, for potentially a safer bottom lane pick, add a little bit of front line there, beef it up. The Kench has been unbenched. Yeah, a little bit of an unorthodox, I, I think, red side uh, build here. If I had to compare the two players, I definitely think Unifoy is on a higher pedestal. Um, if you look at the composition, they could go for Ari, and uh, I I'm very happy with Minji going, take, taking up the Lissandra. So I actually feel like Beyond Gaming have to ban Minji Ari um, in this setup. Uh, the reset composition is just a little bit too strong in this case, but no, they're actually going to go for the Swain. Swain, a little bit less of a tempo pick here, and um, it, it's also much more of a melee range champion, so I'm a little bit curious on why the Swain over the Ari here. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's that's interesting. I'm, hmm. I'm not sure where this one is going, and maybe Beyond Gaming have got a read that we don't, but maybe they've misread it. J-Team, back to their side. They take away the Silas. I think Silas is probably Minji's best champion in this meta. Minji, very much like Husky, is much more of a melee champion player. Uh, he has tried to branch out quite a bit here. We have seen the Seraphine uh, come through, also the Talia come through. Talia as but, well. Yeah, JT is pretty though. much banned all of those. I, I mean, does he go to like the Zoe or something in this case? Like, what do you what do you go to if you're Minji? I'm trying to look for big team fight if I'm going into this draft. So if I'm beyond gaming, I'm pretty happy with something like Nazir just being selected. It pretty much has no counters here. Uh, Belveth is not coming through. That's, that's, that's a yeah, pick. it's our jungle is already picked there. I mean, it's fun to hover. Like it was easy to kind of forget that this champion was enabled this week because we only saw one pick and it was Hana. Yeah, I ran a handful of times after that and that was it. She was nerfed quite heavily. Um, in the two patches that we did see. Ooh, Ooh and a Shivana coming through. Ooh, Leung Shivana! Shivana gets very, very beefy, and this is quite the front line that Beyond are building for their team fight. I do like the Shivana pick here, and uh, as I said, I feel like the Ari is such a strong yeah. answer here. I, I don't really understand the Beyond Gaming band. I, I feel like they missed the mark a little bit on this one. Um, Shivana, I think we're seeing a lot more blind pick Shivanas. She can survive lane quite well. She can farm from a distance, and whenever the other top laner isn't there, she can just shut the wave easily. So I do like this pick quite a lot. Very efficient in terms of resources. You can get your counter jungle on. Uh, does a lot of the damage against tanks as well. So nice front line, nice dive potential by Beyond Gaming. Gives them a, quite a few options to play with. 
But I just feel like JT's bottom side is just so strong. I think his bottom side looks absolutely terrifying. And I don't want to see Ninja on Lissandra. I, I feel like JT just out mind game to be on game completely. Yeah, well, there we go. It's going to be a, a game of uh, ice and fire between the Siobhan and Lissandra for Beyond Gaming. But I agree with you. I think I think it's a bit of a waste on Minji. And J-Team get pretty much everything they wanted, everything they were comfortable with. And I don't think I need to ask you the question about which draft you prefer, Clement. <laughs> Definitely the left side. Beyond Gaming, though, uh, we have to go over their composition. They do have a lot of dive potential. This is a triple dive team composition. Honestly, Wako is kind of bait. The way he plays is he tries to uh, divert attention, and when he's about to die, you devour him, you spit him out again, and then he probably Gale forces him. He doesn't really mind about dying himself. He tries to go with the rest of the team. We have seen Beyond Gaming play these really dive-oriented compositions. It's definitely in their wheelhouse. They definitely understand how to operate this one. But on the flip side, it's a full-tempo composition coming in from... Um, from the side of J Team, this is a composition they know how to play very, very well. Ari is Yumi Boy's best champion. They've got the Callista Renata, which is the best duo lane in the bot side. Um, yeah, I, I, I 100% favor their composition. I feel like their composition is once they 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 land crowd control on a target, they can kill the target extremely quickly. And on the flip side, they can bail people out with uh, the, the Renata class. So it's it's, it's a, just such a tried and true. Uh, strong meta composition that JT map, mm -hmm. and a lot of it given up by Beyond Gaming. I mean, I think this is this is like the, the third or fourth game in a row that you you basically told me I don't like Beyond's draft, but they gave themselves a win condition. Let's see if it works out. It's always a little difficult. Triple dive is a lot of fun, but definitely hard to pull off. And Beyond Gaming have shown in the past that against all odds, they do have not only the coordination but the tenacity to pull it off. And it's a bold move to use Waco as bait, I gotta admit. Um, but J-Team, this is a strong squad. This is not gonna be easy, even though Beyond took a strong one yesterday. I mean, like, I I, I had to agree with you. I think I think J-Team, they got everything they wanted and didn't have to give up much for it. Oh, well, just got the full list of best champions here, and you have the Playmaker and AP Ragas as well. You just think about the scenario, just Ragas chucks his explosive cast into the midst of the enemy team. They're all low health. Ari goes back, gets infinite resets, and then you have Sovereign Domain just popping people one by one. It's a, uh, it's way too strong of a composition. Uh, the start off is great. Uh, to me, Beyond the Gaming, I think they tumbled on their dive composition. Because they were thinking about dive so much, they actually left the Ari open and banned the anti-dive champions like the Swain and the Gamefly. So to me, that was a tunnel. Uh, you don't go give over the best composition, the best combos in the game over to the enemy team just to play your cop. That's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, I think beyond, you know, like we have talked about how the drafting sometimes has has some things to, to be desired, but all the same, beyond have managed to find some wins. Uh, out beyond it all, they have a bit of the narrow uh, kind of win comp for themselves. And J Team, I mean, that bot lane, we have to watch it. The Callista on one and a half items always looks good with Renata. We have seen both these players take these champions, look so good on it. Uni Boy has himself a good champion to play with. And yeah, the AP Gragas rising up in priority is an interesting one too, right? Like you can also use it as a bit of an anti shivana tool. If you have that feral threatening, the Dragon's Descent doesn't have quite as much oomph. You can try to knock it away. But I do like the Shivana being kind of this like giga tank, right? Like it, it becomes mm. such a hard target to take down, especially against a Kalista. But yeah, you can throw the Ren stacks out, but it's not like the same level of hyper carry. I think if we get to the late stages of the game, Beyond should look to have a little bit of an edge for themselves. But it's just, it's so hard to call. It's like, I feel like every time we watch a Beyond Draft, I don't know how to predict it because this has been a little bit crazy. So, you know, well, we'll see how it goes, right? I'm, I'm hearing we have a little bit more time before mm -hmm. we start loading up in, you know, maybe uh, they've got to they've gotta build up to this one. We're building a little tension. This is, this is very much a clash at the top of the table, Clement. And with how everyone is beating everyone, I feel like every game counts. You know, tiebreakers start to become very important as we round uh, this this first round robin out. Uh, I, I've got a theory about Beyond Gaming and how they've done in the first round robin. They are the reverse okay, lay Robin Hood. See, if if they wait, beat wait you, they, they they rob from the poor and, and give to the rich. Are they the one percent? Oh no no, they're actually the Robin Hood. No, no, sorry sorry, I got the I went too deep. In okay all right, you had me going for a sec. I was yeah. like, wait a minute. Because think about the teams. We're that all turned around from that from that last game. Okay. 
The teams they beat are CFO and PSG. And they lose right. to Impunity. So, yeah, that's weird. You know, I think Beyond Gaming are the 99%. I don't know, man. So. I mean, they are, they, it is beyond logic, that's for sure. We'll see who takes this one. Beyond Gaming have given themselves uh, something to work with, but the triple dive is always a risky strategy, and the priority targets are very slippery. You know, one can hop, one can rush, and, well, the Gragas can dash. I feel like everyone's got a gap close or some sort of defensive tool. Big thing this game will probably turn on when you have the dive coming in. Renata Glass and that ultimate, that hostile takeover, very pivotal. And Enzo knows his way around this champion. I've, I've said it a few times in the last couple weeks, but Enzo was a role swapped jungler just a year ago. And now he's one of the best enchanter supports we have. I got to hand it to him. What, what an absolute step up that this guy has had. A huge part of the stats that we just saw from Little V comes from the fact that Enzo actually can play Renata to a very high level. We've seen it so many games, they just walk past the minion wave of level one and four summoners. That's actually just how they start and they can uh, chain that into a level three gank coming in from Kongyue. We've seen Kongyue pull that off quite a few times as well. So they have a very bottom focus early game and that's where I think most of the attention has to go to. I agree. Well. Thank you for bearing with us as we uh, sorted things out. But we are finally on to Summoner Drift here for the fourth time tonight. Closing out the round robin in week number three of the PCS Summer Split. Now, it was kind of interesting since we're about a week behind on the patch. Like, this was our first week on 12.12. .12. We got to see the rest of the world and what they made of it. And, and, and you could tell the PCS teams were chomping at the bit. They were already playing the Amumu before the buffs came in. You know, they were hovering Belveth even though it wasn't enabled. And then only Hana plays it. But, like, it's almost a, a bit of an advantage you get to see everybody else before, you know, and playing scrims as well before you get a chance to take it. So, I kind of like this for our region. For J-Team, for Beyond Gaming, two of our stronger teams here. But uh, definitely some questions remain to be answered for Beyond as they have, as you mentioned, lost to some of our weaker teams while beating some of our stronger. I, I still don't like this Lissandra pick, though. I feel like it's bait. It's a trap. Yeah, Minji has not had the best record on this champion, for sure. Um, but I, I will say something that this is uh, a game where I think J-Team still needs to be very mindful of their tempo in the game, because if it goes a late game, you're facing that Aphelios hyper carry, and you're also facing down Shivana that nobody can kill on your team. It's probably tanky. Here comes the level one by J-Team. This is just standard fear for them, yeah. getting a huge chunk of HP down. We've seen it before, right? Yeah, and, and and J Team's bottom lane, you know, like like kind of became known as like a little bit more like live and let live for a bit. Like they were very consistent, but not the biggest damage dealers early. But this Callista Renata is very different fare, and now that they've they've gotten so much more used to this, we've seen them just taking it two v two to everybody. Lil V and Enzo are just such a power duo, and it's it's great to see them shine together because they do seem to be on the same page. And you can't say the same for Lil V's other bot lane. Uh, colleagues if you will in the past so this jt iteration looking great as they find the uh spear once again into kino a little bit of extra damage from it. but we do have to be very careful who is going for a potential level three gank pathing down here Let's see if he uh decides yeah. to go for that one. Oh, well we have kong yue kong yue sniffing this out already who yeah, knows though and uh, if he stops him Oh, this could set the Wukong quite behind, actually, as they're in for a blue buff tussle. Here he goes, the smite's down. That's actually secured by Husha, but Kongi finds damage, and they're bringing Enzo up as well. That's going to be the end of it. So it ends up just being some time bots, and Husha doesn't lose out any jungle EXP mm -hmm. for it and has the buff advantage. Yeah, I think the most important thing about that play was definitely Kongi just making sure that the Wukong level 3 gank wasn't there. They move up with Renata, drop the wards down, and it pretty much just means that J-Team get to bully this lane to their heart's content. No one is going to be here to mm -hmm. uh, impact this. Meanwhile, in the top lane, as expected, Good uh, Shivana doesn't have a particularly strong early level. So she gets poked out quite easily. Uh, does very little damage early on. And you do see Rock coming out with a very decent uh, lead in terms of the potions and in the CS as well. Yeah, it's a fun way to play Gragas too. You know, for a while back when he was meta previously, it was all about that tank build, and now he gets himself very uh, solid AP. First strike comes in, and he deals a lot of damage. It's it's a threat you have to keep in mind. The burst from the barrel 
can't it can do a lot more than than just knock people to one side it can actually find some serious uh dps as it were young uh getting the casket chucked out at him as well i do love that Gragas skin the esquire he's very fancy a fancy lad up in the top side <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. is uh, actually one of Rock's uh, better champions as well. He loves to play these hard engaged top laners. He was known to be a Malphite player, and Rag is definitely in his wheelhouse as well. Um, JT, looking to inch a little bit forward. Level 3, definitely one of the strong spikes for Ballista. But, uh, that's Ooh, a wow, they actually something. split the handshake. Yeah. That's kind of nice, actually. I, I think Waco and Kino are playing really good against this 2v2. I will say for Beyond Gaming, their easiest target to focus would be the Renata. Very low escape potential, uh, doesn't have any gap closers, so we could see Beyond Gaming try to play a bot lane focus game as well. And if you can just bop the Renata up with the Abyssal Dive, that would be your opening. It's true. I mean, and one thing Minji can do on this Lissandra is still roam, right? Obviously, it can be matched by Uniboy, so we'll have to keep in mind that that is a little bit of potential target lockdown if it comes to it. Busha comes back to the bottom side. He was delayed last time, chased away from the gank, but now he's back with Vengeance, and they're going to try to keep the vision game covered. But I think this is telegraphed by Kino roaming up a little bit. Uh, and Enzo and Lilvi do have a ward in the brush. In fact, yeah, with Kino guarding this, this has got to be obvious. Yep, full control of the bot lane and the river. I, I think they're actually completely fine, uh, even just considering this Drake. Uh, once they figure out Wako is backed, they could go for this one. Looks like Komira is uh, contemplating about starting this one. And indeed, they will just get it. Uniboy already level 6 here. And Rock is heading towards the bottom side. So that might be the X Factor here. It's both top laners coming from oh, the This might get spicy. Busha waiting. He doesn't have Cyclone. Ooh. Konge only level 4, though. Taking Boy too much on the damage. smite against Minji. And... Wow, the dragon actually uh, doesn't fully reset. Kongi is low. This is still very spicy, though. The flash into the ultimate. And Kongi gets a bailout. Will they be able to turn the fight on this one? All of a sudden, things have opened up. The first blood for Lil V comes through. Really Exhaust out. was on. Uniboy. Now Minji goes down as well. JT finds two quick picks. The dragon still aggro. Lil V sitting in the pit right now. Tanking the dragon. It doesn't matter because they've got the fight on it. There's the Abyssal Dive. Looking for the interrupt. And uh, Kino's got so many red stacks sticking out of him. It was easy peasy for Uniboy to get himself a triple kill. It's Oof. all coming up, J-Team. And that was a massive win for J-Team coming in. There are a couple of big things that happened beyond gaming. Try to use all their bursts to take down Kongria, but it didn't work. Kongria is able to just get up with the bailout and continue to deal damage. In fact, it was J-Team that got multiple members down first. So we'll watch this again as Kongria survived, manages to go back into the fight, actually kills Usha first, the jungle down. And then, as we see this fight develop, Rock, with the extra kills, gets the level 6 over Liao. Liao has no way into this team fight, and J-Team, with the low health Kongir, are able to bait a fight when they are at their strongest. Yeah, you were talking about Wako being bait, but how about Kongir? Not only does he get himself a bailout, he gets himself a reset, and oh boy. J team gets such a massive edge there. Not only the dragon, but four kills, three of them in Uni Boy's pockets. And all of a sudden, look at that, that's a seven and a half minute ever frost. Holy cow. Oh boy. I don't think I've seen one this early. Uh, this is definitely going to be a headache right here. I, I feel like Beyond Gaming, to be honest, they didn't really need to contest that Drake at all. I, uh, I think they just got sort of tempted by Kongria being low HP. Minji wanted to make the play. But they just forgot about Enzo. Enzo just being there in the next time calculated. to change all of that. Okay, Minji taking flash a little charm. Ooh, the flash into the point blank charm. Kongye tabs his way through, but here comes Usha for the relief effort right now. That's Kongye going back on the heartbreak, and nice lifesaver there as Usha keeps Minji alive. I don't think that would have ended well for him otherwise. Yep, we do get an uh, extra flash burned on one side, and... Oh, now Leon going in. Rock. Oh, I love this uh, chain of abilities. You are unstoppable during the dragon's descent, so Rock waits for Leon to land before just popping the ultimate and sending him on his own. Yep. With a ruined dragon as well. I like the Skinnergy playing into Kongye. 
uh, Rock doing really well on this Gragas, finding uh, a way to dissuade the damage. Kongi starting off this Rift Herald is going to be happening in full vision, but Beyond Gaming losing map control can't really do much about it. It's a 2,000 gold advantage and liable to grow here. And this is what we were talking about. J Team getting everything they want. The coordination is there, and Enzo's ultimate in that last fight, excuse me, Enzo's uh, bailout in that last fight coming in huge to turn it around. Uh, I just feel like J Team and that is one of our best friends. Yeah, it was, it was, Enzo did a great job there. And overall, J Team's four picks in the bottom side of the map, all of them are S tier. They're just like the best picks currently in the meta right now. Mm -hmm. I, I think this is just kind of meta drafting 101. You get raw power on all sides, and you just fight when in the early game when you're strong. So massive snowball here by Yunu Boy. Yeah. I think all eyes have to be on him at this point. He's got that teleport up, so you know he could uh, uh, he he could roam very proactively and then still come back. With yeah, Minji's going to be able to at least clear some waves, but like you know this Lissandra is kind of a neutralizing pick, and it's not been able to because Uni Boy found that fight. So the big golden fusion happens. It's going to be on Beyond to try and stop the bleeding as we tick ten minutes into the game. So the 2,000 gold edge and Yumi Boy, I think he's just waiting to see if he can bait a kill. I mean, he almost had that on Minji, mm. if not for uh, the timely arrival of Kusha into the lane. Wako Kino finding an opening to try and push a little bit of plate damage in these towers. Uh, but they're just going to let the minions crash in. That's about it for now. And Beyond Gaming are relegated to just waiting here. Uh, I'm trying to think about when they can actually turn things around. Uh, for now, I think it, it still has to come down to uh, Liang being able to survive a full rotation coming in from Ari. I, I think that has to be the most important thing in the fight right now. Charm lands. Are you boy just getting some damage? The orb. Uh, they're going to go for plate damage on this one. Kongi does actually tank a tower shot. Doesn't matter too much. Husha threatens uh, to try and stop this. So they'll just get the charge, just get the couple plates off of it. That's about all they can do. But hey, the Herald was free. Might as well get something out of it. And we do have the Hextech Drake uh, next here. Ooh, Vian goes for a full-on engage. Level down, does have the damage. I mean, Rock is, uh, <laughs> sees the dragon coming at him, starts walking about as fast as he can, and, and Rock has just been able to hold pretty well. I, I feel like this is definitely looking good at the moment. Dragon does come up in 15. This is the Hextech, as you mentioned. And J-Team are the ones that have the opener. Last time, it really bit beyond in the behind when they tried to tangle for it, and... Don't know if they'll go again. Probably not. Uh, I don't think they can actually take this one. Minji's way too far away from the fight. And Leon pretty much telegraphed that there would be no contest because he just popped his ultimate right away. So uh, definitely showcasing top lane not going. I think Leon right now is correctly playing for his own big game. That's probably the best win condition that Leon Gaming does have right now. Shivana is very hard to take down. Uh, incredibly tanky champion. However, this time she is lacking a lot of dragon stacks like if you don't get breaks in the game shivana actually becomes not very tanky it's 10 armor and magic resistance you get for each drake in dragon form and just missing out on that extra resistance is uh does hurt your late game quite a bit i think beyond are definitely going to try to contest or need to try to contest going forward it's our infernals too this is the first infernal mm -hmm. rift i think we've had today and now, team fight stats could come in pretty handy, but an early stack by J-Team. Lil V able to secure up his Immortal Shield Bow now. It's his Mythic over Wako. Remember, Beyond are going to be playing for a little bit on the late side. As you mentioned, not just the Shivana, but Wako on the Aphelios. And J-Team, they know they have a great opener. They had such a good fight that accelerates their game plan so well here. And they just had to cede so much control on the Beyond side. Seems like uh, the next Dragon is going to be very pivotal. Yeah, and... I think the only way Beyond Gaming can play this is with a preemptive gank into the bot lane. Uh, remember, Renata is still a very killable champion. You can engage with Tom Kench and just pop out of the brush with Kusha. So I do expect that to be the location where Beyond Gaming focus. It most likely has to be a lane gank because they're just losing so much of their own jungle control. It's very easy to just waltz in with the Infernal Drink shaping the terrain right here. And you can see JT definitely know the win conditions by Beyond Gaming. I wouldn't be surprised if they just drop a ward uh, into the lane itself just to seal off all potential uh, tracks from Pooja. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Just keep keep the Wukong under lock. I mean, there's a reason this champion has fallen off a little bit now since uh, patch 12.12's come in. We've been seeing a lot of other stuff. The Poppy starts to come up, but 
You know, Wukong's still a very, very good champion if he gets the angle of engage, but if he's spotted coming, you can deny so much of what he wants to do. Will be taking himself another plate here. It's really hard for Wako to stop this. Solo Kino was trying to cover Tribrush, and J-Team continue to muscle in on this jungle. Maybe they'll look to take away Husha's blue for real this time. Maybe give it over to Uniboy if they can. Yeah, easy. I'm just gonna smite it here. Um, it was Komir that just took the blue away. This is a really smart play from JT. You know, they know that the mid laner can always rotate here first. They're keeping tabs on Wukong. No surprises by Beyond Gaming. And I think they can just sort of hold this formation until the next break comes up. Uh, we're gonna get Infernal. So, once again, it does come down to Husha, where he can attack. There could be another angle to just go for Uniboy. Uh, he doesn't have a flash, although he does still have the cleanse right there. Hmm. Hey, Uniboy, after after the big triple kill pickup, he's had a little bit more of a quiet performance, just matching mm -hmm. lane pressure uh, up against the side of Beyond Gaming. Game has definitely slowed down, and this is just how J-Team like it, it seems. 3,000 yeah. gold to lead. I mean, they're far ahead enough that they don't need to be further ahead. They can just play for the Drake stacking, get the Infernal Soul mm -hmm. uh, very early on and be happy with that. So there's not a lot of reason for JT to try and put some risky plays. Um, in fact, I, I think looking to extend your lead right now would, would actually be more detrimental to give your opponents the chance to actually come back into the game. So they're just going to play for objective, objective stacking. You can tell Beyond Gaming are nowhere close. Great timers being used right here. Uh, J-Team are going to get another Herald Fork down into the mid lane. Most likely take down the mid lane tower from here. Yeah, they're just dropping it for plays, just trying to chip away a little bit of uh, damage here, a little bit of damage there, and it's not much Beyond can do as they just don't get an opening. Pretty blind on the map. I guess they see the Viego now, and maybe this is the drop in the mid. I don't think they need it, though. That's actually a back for Minji. This might just be first brick for J-Team off the back of that, but... Kino is coming to the rescue, and Hoosh is not far behind. Probably not just yet. There There's we go. A lot of free damage. damage on Charm the does though. land on the clone. Yeah, you this is Kino here. beyond seeding ground. Well, it looks like they may actually the fastest just lose taker both Calista, powers. But I think you're right. It's just it's a slow burn. But they're getting it. Lil V just keeps on throwing out the spears, and that will be just first brick taken. Oh boy, this is Low such stand. a hard we got, we got a, we got a nice uh, chill League of Legends game. It's not chill if you're Beyond Gaming, not at all. <laughs> they're, no, they're no, no, no. Beyond Gaming so aren't happy about on. this. They're they're just getting they're getting just absolutely choked out. But but it's a sleeper hold, you know. J Team are Beyond is here. J Team first, are like though. no no no. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Dragons up. Five seconds. They have to fight for it. Harold is dropped. Not in position at all. They're gonna try to focus the split attention. Abyssal dive. I mean, this should still go through. I don't think they can stop the charge. Mm. Okay, close attention. This is just so methodical. And who shall to come across the wall? Ah, it's going already. They can't oh. do it. They're zoned out. J Team, go up to Soul Point. They get everything they want. Yep, two towers. The Drake goes down easily, and I was really well played by J Team. They push in mid first. They kind of feign going back into the bottom, and then they walk back and push mid again, which causes Wako and Kino to actually have to walk back and respond. So, even though Beyond Gaming's divers were in place, the Tom Kench and the Athelios were so far away from the scene, there was really nothing they could do. So, J Team get to walk away with another one, and that's a. 21 minute Infernal Soul. Oh boy, that, that's a little bit too early. Yeah, yeah, they like Beyond are, are trying to play for a late game. They just haven't found an opening. They've just found nothing on this map. They can't contest what J Team are doing. And I, I feel like so much of this comes down to Draft Clement. They gave away a lot. And they're getting punished. Yeah, I feel like not banning the RE was just inexcusable in that situation <laughs> they just give over way too much power to the early game sure the lissandra was there and technically it's a counter to the ari but it's a counter in the sense that you can nullify what ari does and sometimes if that doesn't work out she can still pop on that's exactly what happened uniboy yeah. you have to take into the ids as well and uh yeah i think they just allowed it to a strong picture but oh beyond getting going in 
Oh no, Minji, he does actually buy himself a little bit of time, but through the hostile takeover, I don't know if it's gonna make a big difference here. Stacks go in there, Minji, the flashes forward, they do actually try to turn the fight here, Leon looking for even more, and maybe this is the chance, Shivana on top of Little V, but Husha already melting down through this one, the bailout, Lil V gets the reset, Leon just can't quite close it out, and that's two Great. kills taken for none, J-Team. Insane play by Enzo again. He manages to stop the Cyclone midway from Busha and also catch out a Minji as he's coming out. So a lot of the follow-up damage not there for Beyond Gaming. They once again would come out with a massive lead. And uh, I'll be honest, that fight, j -Team didn't even play that uh, completely perfectly. Uh, we saw Rock go in and miss absolutely everything, and they were still able to win. Yeah, the most go. important part definitely coming in from Enzo here. You know, lands the handshake, stops the Cyclone at, uh, before the Fates Call comes in. Great timing here. Uh, don't look at Rock, that was, that, was, that was not intended, but they still win anyway. Man, Leong, Leong had a great Dragon's Descent, but there just wasn't nearly enough follow-up in here. I mean, the one saving grace is Wako's untouched, but, like, it doesn't matter. They lose two anyways. They can't quite get the kills. Enzo again with the clutch bailout. Man, I mean, J-Team, yeah, it, was, it wasn't the cleanest from what we've expected, but they're so far ahead, they're just kind of hitting them with a wallet dip at this point. And it's two minutes and counting for that Infernal Soul, Clement. I feel like the timer is ticking away for Beyond Gaming. Uh, it definitely is. I I just don't see how they can possibly hold on to three items. If you look at Waka right now, he's stuck on two and barely a half. So, uh, J Team have so many ways to yeah, finish. Yeah, well, I mean, do the boots off. even count? I I wouldn't yeah, really say is, so. This is Gale Force in a bargain bin. Yeah, and you Waka also have time to scale the, with a really fast um with a really fast Baron take as well. So J Team can play both sides of the map. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of damage, and J-Team can just try to set up as much as they want right now. They don't need to start the Baron, but they certainly seem to have the option. Beyond Gaming going to try to wrest control of their own jungle back, but they are flying blind. If you look at their vision right now, they've got almost none. Handshake lands on the Leon, just on the edge to look for Husha. Goes into the clone, gets away, Wako holding the minion wave, and it's just J-Team keeping Beyond in the dark. And they have options. Dragon, in a minute. It's also just so hard to get any kills as Beyond Gaming. If you go for Renata, there's Fate's Call. And if you look at the item builds on the carries here, there's stopwatches in all three lanes. Dragon's has a stopwatch. Callista has a stopwatch. Uh, Ari has a stopwatch. Ari has there's a no stopwatch. no one you can actually burst down. Yeah. This this is gonna be so frustrating, and I, I think I think after this game, Beyond have to look at what they're doing in the drafts because they're making life harder for themselves unnecessarily. Yeah. They've still found wins against big teams, but after this one, you know, if they lose, they lost to CFO, if they lose to J Team. Like, you gotta you gotta reconsider what you're doing in the pick ban. Exactly. It's uh, it seems like Beyond Gaming they are the PSG Kryptonite, but uh, the J Team universe a little bit too much to handle. <laughs> And they're late yep. to the party here. I don't see how they get in across rock here. It's so difficult with the Everfrost and the uh, barrels. Okay, Shusha. Uh -huh. Glass goes the wall. This is in full vision. Rock, though, just denying him. There's a two level difference. And he has to put the Cyclone on a single target. The Callista That's gets the soul. Ren down. Minji's going nowhere just yet. But soon the follow gets swallowed up by Kino. And here comes Austin Takeover, gets whipped on the side. Doesn't matter. They just have such. A stronger fight, Leon trying to keep it going for Beyond Gaming, but they just don't have enough. And that is going to be the wipe, and it's J-Team for a clean ace. A perfect ace by that one as well. They get the Infernal Soul in the middle of the fight. They deny any chance for Hucha to come in. He was trying so hard to get past Thragas, but uh, Rock is just doing his job as a bouncer right there. Got the Everfrost, he's got the knockback, the stun, everything there is just impossible. You know, maybe Baron can fare a little bit better than Beyond Gaming in this fight. Let's see if Baron can get something better. Oh, he almost gets Rock. He's doing more damage than they are. My goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I think Beyond really just found out how uh, how deep uh, between a rock and a hard place could be because Husha had no chance to have an impact in this one. And the Ren stacks come through. Leong is trying to flank, but. They just don't have damage. This is all wallet dip. 
Yeah, you can tell Leon, like, uh, Little B is perfectly happy to just go up into melee range against him, and the reset pop is just so strong to the top side. There, there's a reason we don't see anyone give over the, this type of composition to the enemy team. You've got Bailout reset, you've got Ari reset, you've got... It's free real estate at the end yeah. of the day, right? Like, okay, Kino's got a knock up on Rock. We're gonna try to get the 2v2, but look at the damage. The big barrel comes out. That's a little bit of denial. They find the charm onto Husha, not onto his clone, mind Ooh. you. They do take that one down as he tries to spin away, and there's the Dragon Snap again. The damage is just way too real as Yudi Boy comes up huge. Wako Kino evaporating. It's just a matter of time. We get another wipe in as many minutes. Oh, that might not be the end of it just yet, but they will push it in. Oof, uh, <laughs> this is probably one of those few games that I would sanction a surrender from a team. It's just no way to come oh, back in this one. It's not a perfect game, Clement, but it's so close. One kill for Beyond. Report ends up. Yeah. He's griefing. Uh, uh, definitely rough to watch in this one. What an absolute stop. I completely agree with you, and uh, I, I think we have to go back to the, the bad pick in this one uh, a lot. Uh, I, I was very surprised that Beyond Gaming actually gave her for Callista. Uh, we'll have plenty of time to talk about this one, so I think Beyond Gaming doing the right thing here, trying to do a catch. But they just can't find a good target to focus down, you know. Ideally, Poker was the best shot that they had. I think Minji did a great job going all the back control there, but Poker is still able to get out with the flash and come back and heal up more. Even Europe on 12.12. He's getting plenty of HP back. Just look at this. He finishes off the team fight with 70% HP. So, uh, too far gone. Too far gone. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just huge at this point, and they've done so much. You, you see the gold difference over time. We don't normally get into like, oh, looking at the 20k like top bar, but no, we have to add that one here, and it's just gonna keep growing. 26 minutes just about on the game clock, and I think that might be all we get here. But Jin Team. They play it out as safe as they can. They don't push their edge, really, and they're not the ones that are pulling the trigger on the fight. It's Beyond Gaming that are forcing at such a level disadvantage and just losing out every time. They absolutely have to, so... In the brush. Oh, oh, he catches oh, them. Yeah, though. spotted. He doesn't move. He's like, maybe if I don't move, they won't see me. No, I gotta run. Beyond Game are going to try their luck in the 4v3. They do have a numbers advantage here. Uh, I'll bite they're going to have to find some very fast kills. I don't know if it's going to matter. There's the back coming in now in the river as they chased Husha way away. And those towers just drop like they're nothing. Last inhibitor to be an easy peasy one. Here comes the big party barrel. And they managed to turn on the Shivana. Does get Dragon's so Ascent back man. into the base. And here comes Dots to take over again. Calling it a little bit low, doesn't matter. Swallowing up Kino, manages to keep Leon alive for a few more seconds, but they just turn their attention to the rest of the team, and that is it. The double kill for Lil V. Off the back of it all, they don't even care at this point. J Team styling for the win. Onto the fountain dive. Rock gives his life for the cause. And the swagger kill J Team with a nearly flawless victory. Great game coming in by uh, J Team. It, it really did start from the draft. If you looked at the left side, they're all familiar faces, all S tier champions on the patch. I, I can't believe that they were able to get such a powerful uh, bottom side. And on the other hand, for Young Gaming, this is, to be fair, this is a comp that they understand how to run. They have run this sort of style a lot of times before where it's a triple dive composition. Everyone all goes in at the same time. But critically, I think they were missing a number of uh, elements that make a dive composition actually work out. Uh, first off, if you're if you're playing into um, this sort of a, a composition, you really want some side lane pressure because you want to move those side lanes into position. Throughout this game, they were just so far behind in the early game that none of their side lanes would actually develop. They didn't have any split push potential, so they couldn't find those fights where they were actually 5v4 or 5v3. And I have to hark back to this, but I, I just don't understand the Swain man here. I, I I get that Swain's very good against dive comps because he, he survives with a lot of HP and the build that he has does AoE damage. But I, I just don't think you should ban the Swain over the Ari in this instance. And you know, J Team just with an instant lock Ari said, "Okay, give me." Yeah.
I think I think they focused very much on what they wanted to do, and they wanted to dive, and they wanted to stop champions that could stop the dive, but they didn't reckon on the fact that the straight up 5v5 was just going to get completely uh, outplayed. So unfortunately, they, you know, they lose out a lot. I think Lil V and Enzo do a great job in a very comfortable duo champion setup for them. They get a lot of pressure out early. The reliance is on the late game of Thelios and J-Team are like, that's fine. We just won't let them get to that point. And they never did. They never really gave up much. Uh, you know, a mm. couple of deaths at the end of the game and one of them was just a fountain dive for Rock who was having an absolute blast. Seems to be enjoying uh, his time in this J-Team roster. They have shared time between him and Driver, but now Rock has been playing more and more. Certainly looking good. This Gragas pick did a great job of stymieing the Shivana in lane. Didn't get to late game either, but the J-Team game plan, I mean, when they get given all the tools that they need, they know how to get it done. And this Ari got spoon-fed a couple of kills early on in the game, never looked back. I really want to hand it to the J-Team mid laner because Uni Boy, I mean, He's such a big threat, and he wasn't the only one in this game. In fact, he didn't even do the most damage. That honor absolutely goes mm. to the Callista. Uh, but everybody on J-Team did what they needed to. I mean, the Viego was even yep. even getting resets and, and staying alive just barely thanks to the bailouts. I, I think J-Team understand their five-man better than most squads that we have in this league. Uh, absolutely, and this composition just works so well together because it's about outlasting, snowballing into resets, and you have two abilities that can just pull people back. You have the Fates Call, you have the Bailout. And beyond gaming time and time again, I feel like fell for those traps, trying to burst a single target down. Uh, this might surprise a lot of people, but I I'm actually still giving MVP to Enzo this time around. I, I feel like Enzo's sequences ah. in the game were so incredible to watch. And there he goes. Well yeah, deserved. you called it. Let's go. It usually you goes called it, man. later with the triple kill, but I think Edsel definitely was the MVP this game. He, the bailout in the first team fight was absolutely clutch to allow the Drake stacking to start, to allow the Viego to get that chain. And the one on, on the backside of Baron, oh my god, the, the sequencing was so beautiful. Yeah. He predicted the handshake, use, uses the um, hostile takeover before being face called, and then gets thrown back in for even more crock control. That was just a beautiful sequence. To yeah. Had the nice fade of it. I mean, we've seen some great hostile takeovers, but the bailouts were definitely key that game to getting mm -hmm. the resets. Like, so much use. And Enzo just really showing up. Again, this is a guy that, that has only been a support for about a year now, and he has absolutely left his mark, continues to do so, pairs so well with Lil V, and J-Team earn a big win for themselves. Got gifted it a bit in the draft, but they definitely took it all the way to its logical conclusion. I think this is absolutely a team to watch. If you're looking for other squads besides PSG Talon, J-Team currently right up top there. And the J-Team universe definitely is the gift that keeps on giving, Clement. We talked about how it's a bit of a circle of sucks sometimes because there's so many teams beating so many teams. There's a cycle of good as well when it comes to J-Team. Deep Cross, CFO, and, and J-Team proper just looking pretty good. But hey, you know, we got CFO coming up next. We're going to get to see them all today. That's the beauty of it. They're going to be the ones closing us out. It's We're going break. We'll see nine. if CFO will get the win over 7-9 right after this.